to be here and it's an honor to be invited. I'm very grateful to uh, Dot and Evan and all for inviting me to be here uh, tonight. It's great to see this going on here. I'd like to thank all the members of the UVM community, the students, the staff, the faculty, the administrators, for working and striving to make UVM a better place. I can say unequivocally it's a better place than it was 40 something years ago. Unequivocally. I'd like to congratulate the graduates. Uh, this is a significant accomplishment. In, in your lives here, you've worked hard, and I'd like to uh, convey my thanks to everyone who supported you. I'd like to talk a little bit about what it was like 40 something years ago at UVM, and first I'd like to just put it into context of the times. It was a period of uh, great struggle and a period of uh, people demanding visibility and recognition. Uh, we had seen in the 60s the tremendous sacrifice and struggle of the black civil rights um, movement, Dr. King, and many, many others, which continues to this very day. We had seen in the women's rights movement, uh, uh, the ERA was passed uh, in 72, uh, but was unfortunately never ratified. Title IX was uh, developed during this time, and uh, in 73, we had the historic Roe versus Wade uh, decision here. Uh, we had farm workers, we had Cesar Chavez, and the great boycotts uh, in the 60s and in the 70s. Uh, another uh, quest for recognition and for basic human rights that had been denied uh, to all the people who invisibly brought the food to our tables here. In terms of LGBT rights, uh, we saw in the Stonewall Riots in New York in 1969. Uh, in 1973, the APA finally said that homosexuality was not a disease. Uh, imagine that. Uh, uh, and we it from their uh, manual for mental disorders. Uh, they said we weren't crazy anymore. This was the time period back in the 70s here. Uh, we had uh, homosexuality legalized in California in 75. Leonard Matlovich was the first openly gay service member to come out. How far have we come in, the, in that time here? And in, in the important uh, transgender uh, movement, uh, some of us remember uh, Dr. Renee Richards, who sued the American Tennis Association for the right uh, to play a, as a woman here. So this is the backdrop. And I was a, a green young student in the 70s, and uh, there was a group of dances that were held, I think it was above, uh, above a camera store, where you, uh, it was announced in the paper. And, and I, my first time there, I made sure nobody was watching me go in there, but it really opened my eyes. And uh, I met some other UVM students and faculty there. And uh, being somewhat naive, we said, well, why don't we do this on campus? You know, having a student group is no big deal. Let's do it. And so uh, we applied and we did it. And we were recognized. We were a little bit scared, but uh, we went on to hold uh, the first gay dance at UVM here, and it was magical. We had straight people, we had gay men, we had lesbians, uh, everybody, uh, transgender folks, everybody came out there, and it was just an environment where we could finally be ourselves. It was, it was a really groundbreaking event, 
And uh, I left uh, when I graduated in, in 76, wondering, well, you know, what happened in the meantime? And I was invited back by Howard uh, Lincoln, my friend from the Alumni Association, uh, who uh, brought me back to speak as a microbiologist here. And as an afterthought, I uh, wrote to uh, Dot and Evan saying, would you have some time to speak with me. Uh, I, I started, uh, I was the first president here, and uh, uh, I'd like to find out what's going on. And I was just overwhelmed by their uh, reaction. Oh my God, Elvis has come back, you know? Uh, and uh, so it was, it was such a wonderful reception, and I'm here uh, today and as a result of that. Of, in many cases, you know, taking a chance, getting out of your comfort zone, and uh, trying to do what matters, what makes the world a better place. And on that note, I'd like to just briefly talk about the future. We really live in an era of polarization and, and protectionism. We're seeing that everywhere. People want to protect what they've got and make sure nobody else gets it. Uh, we see this on many levels here, politically, personally, and certainly in terms of uh, LGBT rights. Uh, we can only be ourselves. Everybody else is already taken, so that's it. You've got to be yourself, and it's it's hard to remember that because we're in an age of overstimulation. Everybody's telling us who to be, what to look like, what to do, what uh, social contacts we should have, and we need to just step back and uh, turn off our phones for a minute and just find out, breathe deep and find out who we are inside because. Uh, you can't do th great things by being somebody else. It's just impossible. And uh, we really need to get out of our comfort zone. Uh, it's, it's a scary world out there, and we want to you know, hunker down, be with people who are like us, and not see where other people are coming from. And uh, I have been trying to practice this myself lately, so I didn't, don't just give advice to other people. And uh, to step out of my comfort zone, uh, it was about two weeks ago, I went to a Donald Trump rally in Hagerstown. Uh, I mean, talk about uh, the uh, uh, hen in the box house. <laughs> You know, I mean, this was a unique experience. I wanted to see firsthand what was going on. And it was scary. I heard people chanting, build that wall, build that wall. And I heard Trump say, oh yeah, we're gonna build that wall. And I thought, what can we do to make sure that the values we all work for so hard uh, continue? Um, we see, uh, I was reading about the uh, Quest for Civil Union in, in Vermont and how people were forced to get out of their comfort zone, how many legislators got out of their comfort zone and lost their jobs as a result of that. And, None of them say they regret it to this day because they did the right thing. They didn't stay where it was familiar and uh, they, they, there are so many examples. Just briefly, I'd uh, like to mention the story of one of my favorite artists, Paul Cadmus, who uh, was working with uh, the WPA uh, in uh, the Depression as an artist. And he uh, stepped out of his comfort zone and did this painting 
uh, called the Fleetson with uh, a sailors and transgendered women and uh, uh, homosexual couples, and it caused such an outroar in the Congress. This was 1934, and it made him an instant celebrity overnight. The New York and the Paris intelligentsia embraced him, and he became an overnight success. Uh, because he took the time uh, to step out and do the right thing. And it, it reminds me back uh, when I was at UVM, very naive, and I thought, well, I'll do a gay radio show. I'll call it Burlington After Dark. That's not, not too uh, uh, radical. And we used to, uh, I started as my intro and my outro, I did uh, play Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side, you know, and uh, just, it was it's a great tune and it, it just seemed to fit. Uh, so tonight I'd like to congratulate all of you, I'd like to thank you and remind you to step out of your comfort zone, take a walk on the wild side, and you just may make a difference. Thank you. Thank you.